Welcome to Reflections, a program where we discuss values and virtues for the transformation of the individual and the society in general. I am Father George Ehusani, and I'm happy uh, to welcome to the studio once again my friend Dr. Goke Adeguroye. Dr. Adeguroye, you are welcome. Nice to be with you again. Thank uh, you very much. Dr. Adeguroye belongs to the group we call Super Permanent Secretaries of the clan of Philip Asiodu and Co. Super Permanent Secretary. I mean, after, after having lectured uh, in the Department of Environmental Science at OAU, uh, Obafemi Awolo University, he now joined the public service as director in uh, environmental... Uh, Federal Environmental Protection Agency. Federal Environmental Protection Agency. Then he became the DG of the Federal Environmental Agency. Then he became DG of several parasitas, including the Institute Bureau of Public Service Reforms. The Bureau of Public Service Reforms. As the Pioneer DG. As the Pioneer DG. So, were you part of the Oran Sae um, uh, report um, committee and writing? Oran Sae's report thing came in after I had actually retired. After you service. left? Oh, after you retired After I had retired. Okay. But uh, Oran Sae is my friend, so I was conscious. On okay. a few occasions, I but went, you have, I went But you have him. written books on civil service reform. Of course. Uh -huh. And some of the retired thing was actually taking one of the chapters in my book to Good. take it further. Oh, great. Because in, in reforms, we were talking about rationalization of ministries. Mm -hmm. And we had come to the conclusion about what the optimum number of ministries that we require should be. And departments that, that we require. There should not be more than about 18. But because we moved from about 43 under our person job, we were shrinking it to about 26. And then at the time uh, President Buhari was coming in, my recommendation is that it should not be more than 18. And how many do we have now? I don't know. Maybe about 27. Wow. Anyway, so um, Dr. Adeguru has written a number of um, uh, very solidly well-researched books on the civil service. And the, the, you, you give me uh, the one on um, the Restoring title. Restoring Good Governance in Nigeria. Restoring Good Governance in Nigeria. It's a double volume book. Yes. yes. The civil service pathway and then leadership and political will. I, I, I mean, we have sitting down in the studio a reservoir of knowledge, institutional knowledge, with regards to civil service in Nigeria and our path to development, um, how I wish that uh, stakeholders, you know, in our nation's desire for development can utilize the knowledge that, uh, knowledge that is sitting down here. <laughs> and, and that has, he's not just sitting down here, he has put it into books uh, for posterity. And if today the people there are not uh, conscious of the need to go through, luckily, it's in books, so it will not be lost exactly. by the grace of exactly. God. Exactly. Now, so Dr. Adegore ended up in his public service as Director General of uh, DG. Bureau of Public Service Reforms. Uh, he ended as Permanent Secretary, Federal mm. Capital Territory. Yeah, that's where I exited. I haven't served as Permanent Secretary, Manpower Development Office. Yes. Within the Office of Head of the Civil Service of the Federation. Yes. Went on to become Permanent Secretary, Ministry of Education. Yes. Permanent Secretary, Ministry of Tourism, Culture, and National Orientation. Yes. And then Permanent Secretary, Interior, and ended up at FCT. So, we, what is left in the civil service? You literally <laughs> went through every, every... It's only Ministry of Finance you didn't... Uh, Oh, well, I don't know how to manage money. That must <laughs> <laughs> I'm not, it's not my forte, but... Yeah, so you this. know Nigeria. I mean, that's the point I want to highlight. Mm, you know bit. Nigeria very well. Mm, and you worked with a lot of people who have, um, um, who have been in leadership positions in this in, in country at, you know, federal All level. Spaces, yes. Uh -huh. I, I, I really want us to discuss what's going on now in Nigeria. Um, there is a, a lot of cry all over the place. Mm -hmm. uh, as I said in my message recently, Nigerians are hurting. Yes. Every part of Nigeria is hurting now. Uh, the people of Oyo are crying. The people of Ondo are crying. Uh, the people of uh, Olu, uh, Imo State, are crying. crying. Everywhere people are crying. And Zafara has not stopped and wailing. Zafara has not stopped wailing. Mm -hmm. uh, not to talk of uh, Borno, where even the governor has to go with soldiers and be, you know, Diving uh, yeah. to, to, to save his life. Yes. Uh -huh. And even Katsina. And Katsina. Home state of our president. Home state of our president, where he was, he went on a short break, and yeah. the bandits demonstrated to him that yeah. even if he's in town, they can strike. 
So Nigeria is bleeding. It's bleeding from very, it's like a human being whose, um, what do they call it, platelets yeah. are depleted. Yeah. Uh, that he has no platelets, so the blood cannot clot, and is bleeding from every part of the body. Yeah. That is the way Nigeria is today. And it, when a human being is bleeding from every part of the body, it's a serious situation, serious. a crisis situation. It is, it is uh, they will call all the hematologists, all mm -hmm, the experts mm -hmm, to come. Mm -hmm. uh, our leaders are aware that we are tittering along the brink of disaster. Do you think are our leaders really aware of this? That's a heavy question. Because the way to rationalize awareness is when you see response. Okay, it is when people respond that no, you no, know. No, when you see response from those leaders. Then you know they are aware. When people are crying. Even the Sultan crying. Yes. Everybody is crying. And in, mo in virtually all of the cases, they are looking for some statement from the number one leader of the Federation. And nothing is forthcoming. And it's not coming. Of course, there are a few things that, uh, are, wrong, uh, that are wrong with our own presidential system. In a constitutional democracy, the man at the top is put there and held accountable yes. for every minute of the day. Yes. But rather sadly in Nigeria, what we system, the system we have in place is probably one that came from what we were doing from the traditional level. Whereby, Ka whereby we install a our leader, a president and a governor, and worship them as if they are KBSE. And, so, and, and talk about, before you leave that concept of KBSE, yeah. uh, I got to know like 20, 25 years ago that KBSE means KBSE. KBSE, that, that, that there's nobody to question your authority. That nobody can question, question your authority. Authority. And the authority is wielded, not authority that's kept in the pocket. Wow. So, this is the challenge that we have. So, the Nigerian uh, leadership system is almost like the KBSE system. It's even <coughs> an aberration of the KBSE system. Because even in the KBSE system... There are some checks and balances. There are checks and balances. And then there's also prompt responsiveness from the KBAC on issues. When you are offended, the KBAC can call you and find a way to appease you. Even the father. Yes. You know, you, 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 can, you can pat a slave at the back. Yes. Even when they are offended. Yes. Not to talk about those who are who wrong. Who are citizens. And for those who are wrong in the KBAC, that's where the authority comes in. They deal with it decisively. But this is a situation now where we install a KBAC. And yet, we are not able to see any action in all the wailings that the people have been crying. So, we install a KBSE, and left, right, and center, the first son, the second daughter, the third child, they are all wailing and complaining. Exactly. And groaning. Yeah. And the KBSE is sitting on his throne. We are not. We are waiting to see the action of the KBSE. The statement of the Sultan, even on the 29th of January, is still an appeal on the president to see whether he can be able to uh, galvanize a regional response to some of the issues that you are facing. This thing is serious. I mean, talking about crying and wailing, um, what, what, what has led us to a situation where bandits now appear to be in charge of the country and we now have governors begging bandits mm -hmm. Negotiating with bandits, yes. bribing bandits, uh, so that we can have some reprieve. Because you see, we know that is it Zamfara or which state? A few years ago, they had an understanding with bandits. They came up and snapped pictures and showed us with the bandits um, uh, donning um, ammunition and uh, heavy weapons, and then the governor of a state, chief security officer, a security officer of the state was snapping group photograph with them and said that they are now, uh, have, they have an agreement, an amnesty, as it were. But a few months down the road, the bandit struck again. Now, and we are still seeing situations where governors are still negotiating. And we have now sheikhs that are going to the enclave of the bandits and snapping pictures with them and coming out with messages about um, how we should do amnesty for them. 
and going to meet them in places that our security officers cannot locate. Mm -hmm. What's well, going on? Obviously, it's become a business. Mandatory. And we, need, and we need to find out who have raised it to that level. Obviously, some people have been implicated, whether in leadership position, whether in security position, to be able to get to that level. I know in Nigeria, anytime you see something that can bring money, in, every other uh, regional group, we want to look for a way to emulate it. When, so when people are talking about resource control, yes. and we talk about the amnesty that we have for the And those, those are people that we have exploited their land from 1957. Exactly. exactly. And, and rendered the agricultural places unfarmable. Their common wealth their, their, their common has been wealth. taken away from them. Yes. But you cannot compare them with these other people that go directly to you, not just to deprive you of the little that you have, but also to degrade your humanity by raping, by mutilating, by harassing. Uh, uh, so uh, the uh, idea uh, of negotiating with those people, uh, I, I cannot fathom what rationale. No, and, and there is no comparison because, you That's see, none. the Niger Delta uh, militants yeah. did not go to Ondo to uh, kill people. No. They didn't invade farms in Oyo. No. They didn't invade farms in Sokoto. No. They remained within their enclave within area. and they, I mean, um, they harassed oil company people who were exploiting their... Yeah. So what's the comparison? So it was easy for someone like President Yeradua to see their grievance and to be able to address it. Yes. And everybody, you know, clapped for that. But this other nuisance and nuances coming in that we should be negotiating with bandits, I don't know where it's coming from. And it's I don't scandalous. Know. It's, it's, somebody said this is, that is scandalous. They are, maybe they are looking for a way to actually perpetuate it. Because the moment, even the mere fact that you are even taking picture, is going to embolden of course. more to join. And then you, we now even go beyond the people that we stereotype as being responsible to other people that are not even part of them, yes. who will now see it as being lucrative. Yes. So, yes. when they started 419, we know the kind of people that are responsible, but it's now going across so many other ethnic groups, if you are going to ethnic I mean, you, you In a country where for 12, 13 years, you have had the Nigerian army fighting... Uh, insurgency. Yeah. You now see people, criminals in the bush with RPGs. Ah, you now see them with all the heavy ammunition mm -hmm. and you can talk about negotiating with them. Is it not to give information as to where they are to the security agencies? You make it look creative. So it becomes business. Maybe that is why one of the retired generals who was being screened, said that it's not going to live in the next 20 years. That, that, that we are in this for the next 20 years. So you need to now find out who is benefiting from this kind of line of thing. So it's something that we really need to... At examine. the end of the day, Dr. Adegorui, is anybody really benefiting? Because a lot of my brothers and sisters in the northern part of Nigeria can no longer go to their village. Yeah. They are all crowded here. Mm -hmm. They can go back to their village. Mm -hmm. If anybody has to go to his village, then he has to go with a battalion, <laughs> a contingent of uh, uh, kill and go, whatever. Mm -hmm. you, can, mm -hmm. you can't drive a, a, a big man and his driver to mm -hmm. his village anymore. Mm -hmm. So what gain are people getting if they think that they are making cash money? Um, there has to be value associated with, with cash. Cash on its own doesn't have value. Yeah. But then we need to ask those who ask for those ransoms, those who collect them, where the ransoms go. We need to find out what kind of um, tracking system has yeah. been put in place, mm -hmm. even by those who are managing, you know, uh, financial resources. Because you cannot spend eight hundred million in the bush. In the bush, you can't. You can't. So the thing must find some way out. So who are these people? Even if it is politician, even if it is businessmen. There must be a way by which you can profile and track and be able to expose this. We are even told that when you, reach, when you see those rat tag uh, uh, mm -hmm. bandits, mm -hmm. they don't look like somebody who has 10,000 <laughs> in the pocket. So they don't look agents. like somebody who... So, 
where, like you are saying, this is modern technology. Modern technology. To tra look at how Hush Poppy was arrested in Dubai. Yeah. It is intelligence. Yeah. So a whole government, state government or federal government, carries big money, tens of millions, and gives bandits and doesn't know how to trace it. And to some extent, you need to find out why are those bandits stationed where they are stationed? Are they some frontline defense to protect those who are doing some illegal mining uh -huh. or some other or some kind of drug? This is the way it starts. Before you know it, you have another Colombia in Nigeria. Are you sure the situation then, is not yet up to Colombia? And when, when you are in that kind of process, I'm not so sure whether we can come out of it in 30 years. So each state governor has to be able to profile everything that they have in their land. Then begin to deploy this modern technology to be able to track. And of course, in any case, anyway, it won't take so long because if they are really committed to it, and I remember Malam Nasser saying that he was going to do something like that. When he says something like that, I always trust him because I know he's always uh, far ahead of some of his peers. So well, in so no distant future, we're going to be in the well, position. Some of uh, his peers, as you say, one says that we should, um, we should let the people arm themselves because uh, the government is not able to protect them. Therefore, they should be allowed to carry their weapons with them in the bush. That's, 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 that's a tragic statement. That that could even come from anybody at all. Not to talk about someone who is in position of authority. Another one says, uh, what are we complaining about? There are Yorubas in our state. There are uh, thieves in our state. And, but then it didn't add whether the Yorubas are causing trouble in that state. Whether they are whether they are destroying farms or destroying businesses, whether they are raping women and, 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 and killing people, no. That one was my colleague in the civil service who also was my minister. That I, he was the last person that I served. I believe maybe he woke up from the wrong side of the bed that day. <laughs> okay, when he wakes up from the right side of the bed, he does better. No, because I mean, you know, I, I, I know him. He's a smart person and he's a politically suave person. So that that kind of statement will come out of him justifying why Criminality. a Katurera had to carry AK-47 and cannot see the implication on those who are victims. I, that's why I, I really wonder. It's like maybe people you used to know, right? By the time they get into power, they say power corrupts and absolute power corrupts absolutely. By the time they get into power, don't presume that you know them anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe he's, I mean, I would like to believe that he misspoke. Or oh, we misquoted him. Well, we listened to his life. <laughs> 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 but, you know, but rather sadly, it's, it's a, again, it's either he misspoke or he's coming out of a prejudice and he's given, you know, light to some of the criticism coming from other ethnic groups. This is about it. the agenda of the Fulani. This is it, that this, this crisis should not have had an ethnic coloration. Yeah. It is the leaders that gave it ethnic coloration. Yeah. This crisis should have been treated as pure criminality, criminality. and fought. Mm -hmm. uh, headsmen business should have been taken as pure business mm -hmm. and treated like other businesses. Sure. So you go to a place, you ask for land for your business. For your business. Yeah. But the federal government began to associate itself mm -hmm. with headsmen. Mm -hmm. Which is why I said in one of my programs that the people need to see that there is balance and use same standards. Yeah. When, uh, that's your state governor, Akeri yes. when Akeri Delu said, we will read this re forest reserve of criminals. Of criminals. He didn't say we'll read he them of Fulanese. Exactly. He said we'll read this forest of criminals. Yeah. Then from the presidency, mm -hmm. it's a condemnation immediately. Yeah. Meanwhile, there has been tens scores of reports about uh, uh, headsmen harassing villagers and farmlands. Yeah. There was no statement from the yeah. presidency. Yeah. Yeah. Aha. Well, we ascribe so many things to the presidency. We will have said from one of the president's spokespersons, okay. Okay. something came out, okay. which you, was wrong. And I had to go to a, large, uh, to a long I mean, you know, stride 
to repost Adeolu's, I mean, Akeredolu's statement to a lot of my colleagues who are still in the service and in that presidency to say Look this at person what he never said. mentioned. And in this case, he's correct. He's my state. If he says something wrong, I can reach out to him and tell him he's wrong. In this case, he's providing he's right, right leadership and he's saying the right thing. And who will harbor criminals? And he was talking about criminals because in that state, we have people who have been there for several years, hundreds of years. They live with us close to my father's, my grandfather's farm and so on. And we know. But these other people that came recently, and that is actually where I'm saying that they, uh, let me now be specific, Fulani leadership is actually uh, playing into the hands of those of who criminals. are stigmatizing it. Who are stigmatizing oh, oh, okay, them. those six stigmatizing it. Because the Fulani are people that are reputed to be politically sophisticated. And rather sadly right now, they are, not, they are, not they are allowing using, themselves yeah. to fall into the abyss of banditry and sophistry. And that is actually, it, 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 tells, it tells me that maybe there's a fifth column that is also trying to play within the Fulani to destroy them. Because otherwise, they are driving everybody to a position of resentment yes. against an ethnic group when we know that how many of the Fulanis are actually herders. Those ones are probably less than 10%. 5% and, maybe. And among the 10%, how many of them are criminal? Maybe less than 2%. But these ones that are criminal have absorbed all those coming from whether it is a, you know, is a Libya or Mali or Senegal, like uh, the Sultan was saying, okay, and Guinea. And you accept these people into your fold, and these people also now have accomplices in the states where they are operating, giving them information, because they give them information, the money is actually moved out, so there must be accomplices in those states. Oh, sure. So, I don't know how an ethnic group reputed to be Politically, know, politically sophisticated, yes. we allow itself to be dragged into a position whereby it's becoming, you know, people you need to, to avoid in Nigeria. Yeah. I, I, something is wrong. I, 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 I mentioned, I mentioned in, in, in my uh, message a few days ago that I read a, a, a story where the associate, the actual herders, yeah. those who are actually herders, yeah. are saying that, um, no. Uh, since this person became president, we have been suffering. We have been stigmatized. Exactly. We have gotten too many enemies. Exactly. And that's why I say, oh, they too, are, too. they too are hurting. They too are also hurting. They are hurting. That is the average and the elite are also hurting. They are hurting that they are getting bad name. Yes. They are hurting that it is a time when one of their own is at the helm of affairs that things have gone so worse. They are hurting because... Nigeria has driven to a situation whereby some people are beginning to ask, did we not make a mistake by voting out Jonathan? Yes, yes. And that kind of thing actually nauseates my mind. Yes. To think that we can even be considering yes. that what we had in the Jonathan regime can even be better than this makes it sad. And a lot of people are pointing fingers at the face of people like me who actually went out, in my, even though I'm not a political person, mm -hmm. in my own way, to converse that the regime that was coming in 2015 was a regime of integrity, regime of this and so on. Oh yeah, many and people say, oh, so you are one of those who put us in this. Yes. So, of course, they are telling me now, they said, did we not tell you? What are we now doing? The president need to wake up. There's a sense of urgency that the president need to now, you know, um, strike by. And you look at the statement put out by Malam Nasir Erufai. I mean, everything is there in a comprehensive layout. It's told you that the state has to shoulder the responsibility yes. for the three things, which is to be able to, you know, security of the nation. You need to guarantee security to the people. That you need to also protect the rights of the people. And that, in, and, and that lastly also, you need to promote rule of law. Yes. I mean, all of those things appear to be sleeping in our present situation. Because if each one of those are, you know, if we, if we react on each one of those, we will find out that uh, 
I mean, you know, some of the things we are talking about is, uh, you know, will we, be a thing of the past. One of the commentators I had. And that's why they're talking about the body language. It's big because they cannot even read anything anymore. No, we can't run and a country paint. with body language. Exactly. We have to run a country with the ideas of the leader. Exactly. With the vision of the leader. With the sense of purpose of the leader. The alertness of, of the, the leader. leader. Not the, body language. The proactive you know, you know, you know, you know, actions of the leader. It's painful. Very, very okay. sad. Very, very sad. And, and I ask myself, people like you who spent so many years at uh, management level, leadership level, in the civil service, which is supposed to be the engine of yeah. all this. Yeah. How do you feel? I feel helpless. Recently, people say, oh, they've not seen me write something. And in one of the, one of the agencies, they were writing, asking me to come and give papers. And I'm tired of giving papers. Because even the ones we wrote, you talk about the book. The book was written six years ago. How much of it are we using? There's no chapter I pick in that book. If I want to revise it right now, I will write worse. So it's painful. But then we cannot lose hope. Of course. It's still been. a nation. And that is even why, recently as we found out in December, that I said, okay, let me try and see if I can begin to talk with the next generation. Try to raise new Young leaders people, yeah. that might be in a position to take over when, you know, so that at least each time we are talking, we are talking about leadership change in Nigeria. We are talking about as if it is the same national case that is, changing. As if it is either this or this. Yes, and we are talking this character is the turn of this, it's turn of this. Nobody is ever talking about the efficiency or no. the competence of the people that are coming in. Even all these talks that we are talking about saying that um, the current administration has only loaded the appointments with people of his own. If you put people, if you put your A grade people If you put the there, first 11 from your place. If you put them, we will not be talking. But I look at all of them, which, who are the stars? Almost everywhere, people are lambasting. Even as recent as last week, people were attacking me. Hey, you are the one talking about civil service. How can they put a level 13 officer to put uh, to, to go and uh, nominate him to go and be uh, yeah. a chairman of the yeah, EFCC? Yeah, and they were shocked when I now started saying, I mean, I had to start defending to say there's an age that we call the age of rage. Age when people think they can change the world. That's the age between 30 and 45. Jesus belonged to that age. Let's give it to this, to this guy. It's about the age that knew who got there. It's an age whereby they are ready to die, to do something. As long as it's not polluted. If it's somebody who has integrity, who's ready to do the job, we may be able to see far more from him. As long as he's made minimum requirement. That's the way that I was defending. I was, they were shocked that I was I mean, they, 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 Our lot is that not only are we not seeing equity in appointments, but we're not seeing excellence. There is no excellence. There's no equity and the so-called agency that should hold the president accountable. The one you call Federal Character, Federal Character Commission. Commission is gone comatose. Uh, I have not heard about it for a long time. Is there, they're not doing the job. The, the, right, the, the sad thing is, you see many of them, if they go to agency, they are going there with a shopping list of the people that they themselves want employed rather than doing the job. If they are doing the job, they will put the president on his toes to say, Mr. President, sorry, you can't do this. this is what, that's why it's there for. It's not something to be done by one person. It's the commission. Character commission, that's what they call it. But, like I always say, I wish they were the best that we can have. If they are the best and they are also responsive and doing the right things, Nigeria will not... And, and you know what? In every part of this country, you have excellent people. Of course. Every part of this country. Of course. But when people begin to get appointed simply out of patronage and not out of excellence. On this note, do we end like this on this side? <laughs> we say something positive. <laughs> say something positive. Well, one of the positive things that I might say is that if we are talking about the current issue of banditry, that statement of Malam Nasser, Erufai, should be give us the roadmap about where to go. He has analyzed it, and he has also systematically said the things that need to be done. Especially the responsibilities of the various states. The responsibility of the various states, and the fact that you need to have not just federal police, but state and community, community police. police. But more importantly, he's reminding them, reminding us again, about the report of his committee 
on federalism. Yes. Of 2000. That this thing was submitted in 2017. See, you know, and that, well, he tries to be, you know, to say that it's before National Assembly. Between National Assembly and the president, what are they waiting for? It was done by your administration. We are now three, four years into the system. Why are we not doing it? The sense of urgency. It's not there. It's what it, it, we it, now need to. Is that why my, one of my friends says that government is unconscious? That's, 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 that's tragic. If that's the statement to use. It means... We're on life support? <laughs> life no, support? I hope not. Oh, I hope not. I hope on not. this note, I'll bring yeah. this around. And I was looking for something positive to end it. But we ended it uh, again on uh, life support, talking about life support, government being on life support. We pray that uh, uh, whoever is on life support will soon wake up and throw away that gadget and be breathing uh, properly with his yeah. heart so that the Nigeria can move forward to the glory of God. Thank you. I've been speaking with Dr. Goke Adegore. Uh, former permanent secretary, former DG of several agencies of government with all the experiences. <laughs> and uh, um, it's a pleasure to have you in the studio. God bless you. Thank you.